you wanted to see the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro compared to the Wacom Cintiq 16, so I'm going to do that for you, coming up next. Thanks for joining me today, I'm Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. That's why today we're going to be comparing the Artist 15.6 Pro to the Cintiq 16. Now as you may or may not know, these two tablets are quite similar to each other. There's a lot of artists out there who are trying to figure out whether they want the Cintiq 16 or the Artist 15.6 Pro. I've created an in-depth review for both of these tablets, you can check those out if you haven't seen them already. So I'm going to go ahead and do some side-by-side -side comparisons so that you can get a better idea of how these two tablets match up. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by XP Pen or Wacom, but they did send me both of these tablets for review purposes. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. Now the biggest difference between the two of these tablets is the price. The Wacom Cintiq 16 is going for 650 US dollars, whereas the Artist 15.6 Pro is going for $400. So what's the deal here? Why is one tablet more expensive than the other? Well, let's go ahead and compare some of the key features of these tablets and we'll find out. Let's start by testing the parallax on both tablets. And I have to say that parallax performs about equally. The cursor lines up with the tip of the pen pretty well on both tablets. And even if we start to move over toward the sides of the screen, that cursor is still pretty well aligned. Now the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro has a laminated and bonded screen. So technically speaking, there is less of a gap between the screen and the pen tip on the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro. But despite that, the parallax seems just as good on the Cintiq 16. Now things start to change a little bit when you begin to tilt your pen. For example, if I tilt way up like this, then what you'll notice on the Artist 15.6 Pro is that the cursor starts to stray a little bit from the pen tip. On the Cintiq 16, it's still pretty well aligned. And even if I start to rotate, it still stays pretty well aligned on the Cintiq. Not so much on the Artist 15.6 Pro, it kind of moves all around. If I do that here on the Cintiq 16, you can see it stays pretty well aligned. And that's important because when you're drawing with the side of your pen and tilting it, you don't want your cursor to be offset. Now we'll take a look at the color gamut and the color calibration of both of these tablets. The Cintiq 16 has 75% Adobe RGB, XP Pen has 84% Adobe RGB. So in terms of color gamut, the color gamut is wider on the Artist 15.6 Pro than it is on the Cintiq 16. However, the Cintiq 16 is pre-calibrated right out of the box. The Artist 15.6 Pro is not calibrated out of the box, so you will need to use a color calibrator to get the colors accurate. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I've already pre-calibrated both of these displays using my Spider 5 Pro colorometer. And here we can see the before and after views. So right now we're looking at the calibrated view Let's go ahead and just switch these, and now you can see the uncalibrated view. Now, I'm gonna do just one at a time here, and we'll start with the Artist 15.6 Pro. So this is uncalibrated, this is calibrated. Now, it may be kind of hard to tell, but when we calibrate it, there's less of a blue tint to everything. If you look at the uncalibrated view, it's a little bit cooler and brighter. When we calibrate it, everything really evens out as far as the color goes. So although the color gamut is wider on the Artist 15.6 Pro, the color is more accurate out of the box as far as calibration is concerned on the Cintiq 16. Now let's take a look at the Cintiq 16. This is the uncalibrated view. This is the calibrated view. Uncalibrated, calibrated. Wait a minute, I don't see a difference. And that's because this tablet is already calibrated, so you don't need to worry about that. The color is already accurate. So basically you're choosing between a wider color gamut or a more accurate color out of the box. Once you've calibrated the color on the Artist 15.6 Pro, it's not all that bad. Now as far as brightness is concerned, both displays are adequately bright. The Cintiq 16 is turned up to 100% brightness right now and you can see that the colors aren't too washed out. It looks pretty good, it's pretty bright. The XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro is only turned up to about 68 right now, so it's a little over halfway to its maximum brightness. Now there are buttons on the side here where I can actually turn the brightness up. So if I go ahead and crank this up to its maximum, 100, you can see it is quite a bit brighter, but as you start to increase the brightness, the colors begin to become a little less accurate. So although this screen can be brighter, you probably don't want to put it up to its maximum brightness. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back down to 68. 
As far as the visibility of the pixels, I don't notice that the pixels are any more visible on either one of these screens. They're both a 1920 by 1080 HD resolution, so they're equal in that regard. Now I'll go ahead and zoom my canvas out very small here, and even with the canvas zoomed out very small, I don't see the pixels as being too big or too noticeable. Now let's talk about the feel of the surface on each of these tablets. The Cintiq 16 has a paper-like feel when you're drawing, and you can kind of hear a swishy sound. Kind of sounds like the friction that you'd get when you're drawing on paper. And this friction provides a little bit of resistance on your pen. It doesn't feel slippery to draw on. It's not as much friction as you'd find with the etched glass on the newer, larger Cintiq Pros, but it still feels pretty nice. When I draw with the pen on the XP Pen Artist 15.6, it doesn't make that swishy sound, and it doesn't have that paper green and that resistance. It's pretty quiet, and it feels a little bit more slick or a bit more slippery, kind of like the surface of your smartphone. Personally, I prefer to draw with a tablet that has a little bit of tooth or grain because it just feels more natural to draw on. A piece of paper has a grain, a canvas has a grain, so your tablet should too. When I tap the pen on the screen on the Artist 15.6, it's a little bit noisier than when I tap the pen on the Cintiq 16. I think it's probably the nib inside of the pen that's making the noise when you tap on the surface. So if you're just drawing on this normally, versus this one, the Artist 15.6 is a little bit more noisy. Now that's the feel of the pen, but let's talk a little bit about the feel of the skin. You're gonna be dragging your hand across the tablet a lot. Now when I do that here on the Cintiq 16, it feels kind of sticky, but kind of slippery at the same time. It's really hard to describe. It's also gonna depend on how sweaty your hand is and how dirty your screen is. After a while, it might kind of start to make kind of a screechy, rubby noise. When I rub my hand over here on the Artist 15.6 Pro, I have to say it feels just about the same. The same thing happens. If my hand starts to get sweaty, then it starts to stick to the screen more and it'll make a squeaky, rubby sound. So as far as the feel of the screen, they both feel about the same. I would say if anything, because of the paper-like surface, the Cintiq 16 might be just a tiny bit smoother. Now let's discuss the stand and mounting options for each of these tablets. Now, both of these tablets have options for a stand. The stand comes included with the Artist 15.6 Pro, and there's a built-in stand on the Cintiq 16, but there's also an optional stand that you can buy that is a lot better than either of the built-in options. So the stand for the Artist 15.6 Pro is this plastic stand, and it's kind of cheap, flimsy plastic. It definitely will hold your tablet, you can see it has some give to it and it flexes. So I don't know, it just feels kind of cheap. The other thing is that it doesn't attach to the back of the tablet. There's no way to attach anything back here. So you can rest your tablet on there. That's all fine and dandy, but if you wanted to, let's say, pick your tablet up and move it, you'd have to move the stand separately from the tablet. And that could be a pro or that could be a con, depending on your workflow. Personally, I like the stand to attach to the back of the tablet. The stand on the Artist 15.6 Pro also only has one angle. This angle here, it's kind of angled away from you, so unless you're gonna be sitting really close right up next to it. Oh, that fing hurt. Ah, uh, donuts. Then it's not the best angle for drawing. It's my preference to have the tablet a bit more vertical while I'm drawing, but it's also nice to be able to change positions while you're working. For example, if I were at a cafe or a desk where I'm scooted in a bit closer, then I might want the tablet to be more flat. It's unfortunate that there aren't mounting holes on the back of the XP Pen Artist 15.6 so that you could mount this to an Ergotron arm or some other kind of stand. You can get other stands that are similar from third-party manufacturers, but again, they don't attach to the tablet. Now moving on to the Cintiq 16, there are legs on the back that fold out and they have two different positions. But again, the incline is similar to the Artist 15.6 Pro but at least they're attached to the back of the tablet and they won't come off. It doesn't help you in terms of putting the tablet in your lap, although you could lay it flat once you fold the legs in. Another consideration is moving the tablet from your desk into your lap. If the stand doesn't attach securely to the back of the tablet, then it gets a little bit sketchy when you're trying to move it from the desk into your lap. So it is easier to go from stand mode to in your lap with the Cintiq 16. Now I definitely recommend that you get 
the optional stand. The optional stand will give you way more options for positioning your tablet. You can see I can put it upright like this, and then I can lower the angle to really whatever angle I want. There's several different options available. The stand is also metal, it's very well built, and it attaches securely to the back of the Cintiq 16, so I definitely prefer this stand over the Artist 15.6 Pro stand. But again, the stand is free on the Artist 15.6 Pro, and you have to buy the better stand for the Cintiq 16. Now let's talk about the cables. The cables for the Cintiq 16 are definitely more elegant. There's this big, giant, thick cable that's coming out of the back, and it's really securely attached to the back of the tablet. You actually have to kind of snap it into place, but it attaches very securely. Now there's just one connection to the back of the Cintiq 16, and then it splits out into a cable that has HDMI, USB, and power. And then of course you would plug those into your computer and your power outlet. It's a very nice, very elegant looking cable. The Artis 15.6 has a very similar cable. It's a single USB-C cable that attaches to the tablet and provides both video and data, but you have to connect a few cables together and it doesn't look quite as tidy and elegant as the Cintiq 16's cable, but it does basically the same thing. It splits out into HDMI, USB, and power. Now where the Artis 15.6 Pro has the Cintiq 16 beat is that it's using this USB-C cable and this USB-C cable can be connected directly to your computer to provide both input and power. So you can power the Artis 15.6 Pro using only the USB-C cable rather than having to plug it into an AC outlet like you would with the Cintiq 16. You do have the option of plugging the Artis 15.6 Pro into the wall. You can just plug the USB cable into the power adapter and then you can plug it into AC power as well. Now the downside to using USB-C for your connection is the connection is a little bit weak compared to the Cintiq 16. I'd be worried about the connection breaking or becoming disconnected. Now let's talk about the power button location. The location of the power button is on the side of the XP Pen 15.6 Pro, and on the Cintiq 16, it's located in the top right. Both power buttons are LED illuminated, but on the Cintiq 16, you can dim or turn off the LED illumination. So if that sounds useful to you, that could be a pro for the Cintiq 16. But if we consider the location of the button, the power button is on the side of the Artist 15.6 Pro, so you wouldn't really be able to accidentally press the button when you're drawing on the screen. If we compare that to the Cintiq 16, you could accidentally press the power button when you're drawing if you graze your hand across it. But just as well, if you were picking the tablet up, you might accidentally press the power button on the side, whereas you wouldn't have to worry about that on the Cintiq 16. Now in terms of durability, the Cintiq 16 is definitely more durable. It feels more solid, it's not very flexible, but it's definitely bulkier and heavier, especially when you add the stand to it. Now of course it needs to be sturdy and it needs to not be flexible because it needs to be able to handle the VESA mounting on the back which attaches the stand. And if you wanted to attach the Cintiq 16 to something like an Ergotron arm, the back needs to be very durable and rigid, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of tension from that Ergotron arm and it could damage the tablet. The Artis 15.6 Pro is much thinner and it's much lighter. It feels light as a feather compared to the Cintiq 16, but it's also very flexible. So you could bend it, you could step on it, you could crack it, you can't attach it to a VESA mount. It's not really designed to, it's meant to be lightweight, but it's also not quite as durable. I would say overall, as far as the feel of both of these tablets, the Cintiq 16 definitely feels more durable and well-built. The Artis 15.6 Pro feels a little bit cheaper in my opinion. One thing you might notice if you press down on the screen, for example, is the screen itself distorts. There's a little ripple of blue that comes off the side here. So, you know, eventually that could do damage to the screen. I don't know. If you do that on the Cintiq, you don't have that same issue. You can press as hard as you want on the screen here and it's not gonna distort the screen. Just as well, if you press down really hard with the pen on the screen, you will see some distortion underneath the pen. That's due to the technology that the screen uses. If I do that on the Cintiq 16, I don't get that same kind of distortion because it uses a different kind of screen technology. Now let's move on to shortcut keys. The Artis 15.6 Pro has eight express keys or shortcut keys that can be programmed to perform commands in your art application, such as undo or redo, or you could invoke free transform, or you could save your document with an express key. They're really very useful. There's also this wheel which you can use to rotate and you could use that to zoom in or zoom out. 
or you could even program it to make your brush larger or smaller. You'll notice the Cintiq 16 does not have those express keys. So that could be a con if you like your express keys. However, you can get an optional express key remote for the Cintiq 16, and that will give you 17 express keys and a similar touch wheel. It is kind of nice to have express keys, especially if you don't like to use a keyboard. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. As far as fan noise goes, I haven't noticed any fan noise on either device. The Cintiq 16 has vents up on the top left and right, but I haven't noticed any fan noise, even with the screen turned up to 100% brightness. Now, the Artis 15.6 Pro doesn't have any external vents that I can see, but it's also a silent tablet. Before we move on to the next comparison, if you're new to this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button and use the bell icon to enable notifications. That's the best way to know when I release new reviews. Now let's move on to discuss the pens for each of these devices in more detail. Both of these pens feel pretty nice, but in my opinion, I like the Wacom Pro Pen 2 better because it just feels like it's more balanced and the rubber latex-free grip just feels a bit softer on the Pro Pen 2. It feels a bit more rigid on the Artist 15.6 Pro Pen. The pens are both very similar in design. You'll notice that on the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro, the nib protrudes a lot more and is a lot thicker than the nib that is on the Wacom Pro Pen 2. Another thing that you might notice is that on the Artist 15.6 Pro, there is not an eraser on the back of the pen. There is an eraser on the back of the Wacom Pro Pen 2. And you can use this eraser just like an eraser on a pencil to erase what you're drawing. And the eraser even has pen pressure as well. Now, both of these pens have over 8,000 pressure levels, which means that you'll get a nice smooth transition between thick and thin lines and transparent and opaque paint. But pressure levels aren't all that matters. The pressure response is also very important. On the Artist 15.6 Pro, if I use my lightest pressure, it feels like the pressure doesn't really start to make a line until I press a bit harder. And it feels like the very, very light end of the pressure just isn't very responsive. Now, if I do that same amount of pressure on the Cintiq 16, I begin to get a line at my absolute lightest pressure. And it just feels a lot more natural and smoother. I can very easily go from a very thin to thick line with a nice even transition. I can do that on the Artist 15.6 as well. And the transition is very smooth. It just takes a little bit more effort to get that lighter end of the pressure. Both of these tablets support pen tilt, so I can tilt the pen and I can draw with the side of the pen, kind of like I draw with the side of a pencil. So for example, I can tilt it and I can get a broader mark like this when I'm drawing with my pencil and then back up to more vertical for that thinner mark. I can do the same thing here with the Cintiq 16. I can draw with the side of my pencil and with the tip of my pencil and go back and forth very easily. Now, really the only difference that I notice as far as the pen tilt on both of these tablets is that the pen tilt angles are a bit more jumpy on the Artist 15.6 Pro. So the jump from upright to tilted is a bit more extreme on the Artist 15.6 Pro and it's a bit more smooth of a transition on the Cintiq 16. Another difference is that in Photoshop, the Artist 15.6 Pro Tilt only supports the legacy brushes, whereas all of the brushes work with the Cintiq 16 pen. Now, pen tilt is certainly a nice feature, but do either of these tablets support barrel rotation? The Artist 15.6 Pro's pen does not support barrel rotation. It only supports pen tilt. Now, the Wacom Pro Pen 2 also only supports pen tilt. It does not support barrel rotation. But if I have the optional Wacom Art Pen, that does support barrel rotation. And so if I had a brush that was say flat like this, I can rotate the barrel of the pen and rotate the angle of the dab. So I can use more than just the default pen that comes with the Cintiq 16. I could use the Art Pen. I could use the new Pro Pen Slim, which is a lot thinner like a pencil. You can see that it's way thinner and it feels a lot lighter in your hand. It's a really, really nice pen. So I can use all of these different pens with the same tablet, and I have options. And there are more pens than just this, and you can see this one pen is still programmed to the pencil. So if I wanted to have just a pencil brush and just an ink brush, and I wanted them to be separate, I can do that with the Wacom tablet. Can't do that with Artist 15.6 Pro. And no, these Wacom pens will not work on the Artist 15.6 Pro. Another way that you can customize your pen and drawing experience is to change the nibs. And on the Cintiq 16, 
you can use lots of different kinds of nibs. These are some examples of different nibs. I have these felt nibs, I have standard nibs, and then for the Wacom art pen, I have these chisel nibs. Wacom has lots of different nibs you can use to customize your pen, which changes the feel of the pen on the surface of your tablet, so that's a really nice bonus. You cannot do that with the Artist 15.6 Pro because it only supports the pen that comes with the tablet and the standard nibs. Nibs can be purchased online, and they're about the same price for both tablets, but Wacom provides 10 nibs for the price of XP Pen's 50 nibs. Now, nibs should really last you quite a while, so I think 50 nibs is just a little bit excessive, because display tablets don't wear down your nibs quite as much as they do with a regular tablet without a screen. Both of these tablets come with replacement nibs. The XP Pen actually has eight replacement nibs, that are hiding in the pen case here for a total of nine nibs that come with the tablet. The Cintiq 16 also comes with replacement nibs and those are in the pen holder. You just pull that out on the side and in there are three replacement nibs for the Pro Pen 2 for a total of four nibs. Again, because these are display tablets, they're really not gonna wear down your nib as much as a non-screen tablet would. So you're probably not gonna need to change your nib all that often. As far as line quality goes, the Cintiq 16's lines are a bit more stable. The Artist 15.6 Pro suffers from abrupt tapers at the end of lines and lines that are a little bit wavy, even if you use a straight edge. This can be especially noticeable if you're using a very thin brush. As far as a stand for the pen, the Cintiq 16 has a built-in pen holder on the side of the tablet. You just simply slip your pen into this sleeve here and it holds it right on the tablet. And you can even take it off and you can put it on the other side if you're left-handed, and then you can have the pen on that side. On the Artist 15.6 Pro, there is no way to attach your pen to the side of the tablet itself. You could scoot the tablet up a bit and you could rest the pen here on the stand, or there is a pen stand that is built into the pen holder that you just put on your desk like that. The Artist 15.6 Pro comes with a case to protect the pen. You put the pen in the case, you screw the other end on, which is that pen stand we just looked at, and you have this nice, big, bulky thing to hold your pen. Your pen is never going to get destroyed in this big old case. Now, the Wacom Pro Pen 2 that comes included with the Cintiq 16 does not come with a case, but you can order the case separately if you really want one. You put the pen in the case, slide it closed like that. Similar cylindrical design, except this one is made out of metal, whereas the one for the XP Pen Artist 15.6 is plastic. And you can see there's a big difference in how big they are as well. The XP Pen's case is a lot bulkier. It also weighs a lot more. As far as lag on these tablets, the Cintiq 16 has less lag. The lag on the Artist 15.6 is especially noticeable when you're trying to draw very, very fine lines. I don't know if this lag is necessarily caused by the latency of the tablet or if it's just the pressure response of the pen. If we do the same marks on the Cintiq 16, you can see they are not quite as laggy. And just so you know, lag is to be expected on any drawing tablet and can actually be made worse by a slower computer or brush stabilization. Now, as far as the software drivers go, the drivers are pretty decent on the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro. You have pretty much everything you'd want as far as getting the tablet to work on other monitors or changing your pen pressure sensitivity or calibrating the display. You can even go into the display settings and you can change the color temperature or the red, green, blue levels, the brightness and the contrast, etc. What's nice is you can even take that menu and move it out of the way. That way, if you have a colorometer here in the center of your screen, it's not covering that information, which is really helpful. There's a very similar control panel here for my Wacom tablet where I could calibrate the display. I can change the pen pressure sensitivity. I can reprogram the buttons on the side of the pen. And I even have a display setting where I can change the brightness and the contrast and the color temperature, just like I can on the Artist 15.6 Pro. I can also use these menus to program the express keys. Those are the buttons on the side of the Artist 15.6 Pro. And if I were using the optional Wacom Express Key Remote for the Cintiq 16, then I can program those here. Both control panels will let you customize the express keys for individual applications. So for example, I could have express keys for Clip Studio Paint that are different from the express keys in Corel Painter or Photoshop, which is really nice. I would say overall, the control panel for the Wacom Cintiq 16 feels a lot more polished. Another thing that sets the Wacom control panel apart from the XP Pen control panel is that with the Wacom control panel, I can bring up an on-screen radial menu, which gives me more shortcuts on my screen. 
And I can also bring up Wacom screen keys, which are more on-screen keys that I can have here on the screen and I could undo or redo. So basically, you don't even really need to buy this optional Express Key remote, nor do you need Express Keys on the side of your tablet as long as you're willing to use the on-screen keys. And you can bring up that radial menu and on-screen keys using the buttons on your pen. As far as the operating systems that are supported, the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro supports Windows 10, Windows 8, and Windows 7, along with Mac 10.10 .10 or later. The Cintiq 16 supports Windows 7, 8, and 10, as well as OS X 10.12 or later. So there you go, that's a direct comparison of the XP Pen Artist 15.6 Pro to the Wacom Cintiq 16. I'll let you decide which tablet is best for you. In my opinion, I like the Wacom Cintiq 16 better. It just feels like a better, more well-built tablet, and it doesn't have all of the quirks that the Artist 15.6 Pro has. But on the other hand, there are some things like the express keys and the USB-C connectivity that make the Artist 15.6 Pro better than the Cintiq 16. So that's it for this review. Up next, you can watch my full review of the Artist 15.6 Pro or the Cintiq 16. And if you want to check out some of my other tablet reviews, I'll put a link down in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.